Our first guest tonight is an Oscar, Emmy, and Tony nominee. You know from more things than I have time to mention. Her latest is called Alice Darling. It opens in AMC theaters January 20th. Please welcome Anna Kendrick. <laughs> Thank you for braving the bomb cyclone to be here tonight. I did it specifically for you and only oh, you. I appreciate that. <laughs> did you ever work in a movie theater? Uh, because I bet oh, you would be good at the, the thing because you were good at the cup deal with the, oh, you know? Oh, no, yeah, that skill might have translated. I never worked in a movie theater. Um, my brother worked in a movie theater. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so, so uh, he worked in a movie theater. That actually, I ended up getting drunk for the very first time as a teenager at his, at the movie theater that he worked at because it was like, after hours and you could sneak in alcohol. And I think it was um, like coffee, brandy, and milk, which is what? kind of a staple in Maine because we're very classy <laughs> is as, it really? as a state. You drink, your first time getting drunk was coffee, brandy, coffee, brandy and milk. Coffee, brandy, and milk. I'm t no, it's weird to me that y'all think that is weird. Oh. <laughs> because in Maine, that's like the state drink. We have an alcohol problem. It's not a, it's a, it's not a big deal. It it's sounds like, like it's something. It's very cute, actually. Like the, the Gordon's fishermen would have after a long day at sea. Well, that's, that's like the kind of persona we're all going for in Maine. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So, I'm sitting there with like coffee, brandy, and milk watching like, the legend of Bagger Vance or something, and being like, this is so moving. I don't know. <laughs> did, you, um, did you revisit the coffee, brandy, and milk later in the evening, or how did that first experience go? Um, no, I, I think that once I moved to California, I never found it again. Oh, and no, I, I meant did you vomit, but um, oh. yeah. I was trying to say it in a nice way, and in a way. <laughs> no, no, I managed. Uh, you managed, yeah. yeah. Well, that's very impressive. Was your older brother? Yeah, yeah, and so was... it was very like, oh, you know, like if you're gonna try out alcohol for the first time. It should be while I'm around. It should be on my watch. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's very, some milk. Very responsible, yeah. Get some brandy and dairy products in you. It's funny because not only should you not be drinking brandy as a teenager, you shouldn't be drinking coffee probably either, right? Yeah, so, or milk. Or like that, milk. you're too old to be just drinking milk. And yeah, none of that was right. <laughs> yeah, you go home to your parents, you're like, yeah, but I did have some milk. Yeah, yeah. for my bones. <laughs> was it a big secret? Like, did you have to keep it quiet at home? Oh yeah, no, I think like, like I, I walked in and um, you know your first time being drunk, you're like, I am pulling this off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, you stand up and you realize you aren't. Yeah. You uh, would your brother give you like stuff for free and sneaky? Uh, he said um, you snuck in, but. Well, no, I mean I think he probably did. I don't. I try to actually, I try to avoid movie snacks because I cannot stop myself from just like shoving the entire snack in my mouth before the movie has Same been done. Same here. I you finish it before the previews but, are done. Yes, before the previews have, are even done. It's just like, I can't stop myself. It's a conveyor belt of just calories. I turn I into need, a like, horse, just <laughs> eating just out of a- bag? Yeah, like a feed bag, yeah. I need somebody to invent like a thing for nachos and popcorn that's like one of those pet feeder things when you like leave your cat that's for a, a great for a weekend where it's like you have to wait until the next preview starts before you can take another <laughs> handful of popcorn. That's a great idea. That's maybe, the only thing that's going to slow me down. You know, maybe what they could do is cut a little hole in the bottom of the popcorn and then like suspend it above your head. And so you could just take one at a like time. Like a gerbil. Like a gerbil. Exactly. That's brilliant. I think you could really market this because I have that same problem. And I'm going to tell you another thing. You don't have little kids, right? I have a couple of kids who want to know what happened to all the popcorn. Oh. Because they get involved with their, you know, gummy rings or whatever they have. Right. And, and then, then later they... it's like, Dad, I just want some popcorn. I know. And then I act like one of the others. Like, I don't know. I think I don't Billy know what ate happened. it. Yeah. yeah. I start looking around in my lap for uh, <laughs> spares. <laughs> yeah. But if we had little gerbil stations for if them. If we only had gerbil stations. I tell you another thing. I'm sorry I'm talking too much about this. I once suggested to my wife that rather than come in the night to give our daughter a bottle, we set up a pet feeder in the, um, in the crib. And we put formula in it. And then whenever she got, gets thirsty, she could, you know, just kind of nurse like a little goat or something like that. So um, this is your solution for everything, I see. I guess so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Yes, She's moderation. She's got one idea, but it's a solid idea. <laughs> Oh, my mother is so obsessed with you, you would probably what? call the police if you ever met no, her. No, no. My mother has watched Pitch Perfect 
hundreds of times. No. There, yes, and I'm sorry you're reacting that way, but hundreds of times. That's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> the first 20 times is sweet. The next 80 times, it becomes crazy. And for a long time, anyone who walked in the house, I mean, like the FedEx guy would show up, she'd be like, sit down. And then my uh, daughter's friend took video of her because she said, you have to watch this movie, sit down, and I want you to watch my mother watching you on. She is the target demographic, first of all. That was so wonderful. That makes me so happy. Oh, good. OK, good. Oh, my god. I'm going to make her less happy Why to see it. Why is she here? That's great. Oh, my god. She, we have a restraining order against her. <laughs> Just a preemptive measure. <laughs> do you, um, did you make a New Year's resolution? Is that the sort of thing you do? Well, I make the same New Year's resolution every year. Um, I, I sort of, it's like a vague sense of, like, this year, will be the year that I don't let, like, the kind of order and cleanliness of my house fall apart. Like, Are I'm you always, messy? Like, like I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm either hyper-organized or hyper-messy. So if I let, like, one crack in the system show, it just all falls apart. And I'm always, like, if I just perfect, a, like, this year I'm going to come up with, like, the perfect organizational system, and and I'm just that like last year's system was flawed, okay. and it's like no, the the guy that runs the system is flawed. Like you the have, problem is me. Yeah. But do you have too much stuff? I have so much stuff. Well, I actually am like uh, I moved, so right now I'm not even in the organization phase. I'm like in very small home repair phase, oh. which gives me irrational anxiety. Really? Like, I, I'll have somebody over to just, like, fix a light switch or something, and the second that there's, like, a, huh, this, mm, this wire, I just am, like, I will do, I go into overdrive. I will do anything to just be, like, what? Is it just, it's fine. It's fine. Whatever it is, it's fine. Don't tell me. You can just leave it. Like, if there's rats in the wall or, like, lizard people living in, like, an attic upstairs or something, like, just don't tell me. It's fine. It's, you know what? Let's burn this place to the ground. <laughs> like, I don't, you know what? I don't even live here. We're trespassing. Let's get, let's get out of here. Like, wow. I just, like, it, for some reason, it, like, triggers this insane anxiety where I'm like, I will just do anything to have this conversation stop. So. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll see a clip from the movie Alice Darling. Anna Kendrick is here. We'll be right back. No, I lied to him. He doesn't even know that I'm here. What? I mean, he does now. <laughs> he called me. Well, why did you lie to him? Because I'm bad. What? <laughs> you wouldn't love me if you knew how bad I am. Jeez, is that something that he tells you? That's Anna Kendrick in Alice Darling. That is not pitch perfect. You know, your acting is really great in the movie, Thank and uh, it, it's very intense. I mean, I, I don't want to try to describe it, but it was yeah. largely about a young woman in a very unhappy, unhealthy uh, relationship. Yeah, it's about a woman in a psychologically abusive relationship, and and like, but it's I don't know. It's not what you think it would be. It's like I I always feel like the filmmakers just did such an amazing job, and. It feels like when, like the first time you read like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, where you're like, am I going crazy? Like just the experience of consuming that piece of media makes you like, am I crazy? What's going on? Um, Did you feel that way while you were shooting the movie? Yeah, well, we shot it in Canada. And at that time, the, the quarantine rules were really, really strict. So I oh, was- Oh, right, they, I was, they were very strict. It was strict very strict. So yeah. like, if you went into the country, you had to quarantine for two weeks. And not like, hey, stay away from people. It was like, you stay in this room and the government comes and checks up on you to make sure that you haven't like left the room. Like so, Justin Trudeau uh, stops <laughs> by and goes, mm hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. that's what happened. Yeah, wasn't there a huge fine or something like that? Oh, yeah, no, they would have like sent me away and shut down the movie and everything. So I had to stay in this 
in this room for two weeks, which um, which did make me feel like I was going crazy. That's crazy. I drank so much wine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was just like on this lake, which was very picturesque until it's like day 11 and you've had a lot of wine. And then you're like, I'm going crazy, but I'm just method acting. <laughs> so you were quarantined on the lake because the movie it revolves around, you're around a lake yeah. it, 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 on that same lake where you shot the movie. Yeah, yeah. So we were um, like shooting around this lake and my, well, I was actually staying at this this tiny little place that was on the lake as well, which there's a, I mean, in that clip, I'm like, uh, coming out of the water, so there was a there were, there are scenes that are kind of like underwater, and it's a little indie movie, so we had like six hours where we could afford to rent like underwater cameras and have like a safety guy and scuba gear around, and um, the director was like, yeah, there's just like this one shot. We really need you to be like under the water for a little bit longer, but like they've sent away the we can't afford to get like an underwater camera back. So I think it's like the last shot of the movie even is uh, the the cinematographer just went to Walmart and bought a fish tank and like put our one good camera in the fish tank and was like, I really hope this is a good fish tank. And um, and so in the place that I was staying, like after work in secret, we were not permitted to do this. Um, I like, and in that scene, I'm like in my bra and like the director, Mary is on the dock, like saying action, but it's just this one guy with a camera in a fish tank and me in my bra. And there's like preteen boys, like several houses down going like, is that lady from that one movie in a bra, like doing a weird sex thing with a camera and a fish tank? And yeah, I was like, I'm really, I hope that these kids are jaded enough that they're just like, whatever, and not putting this on TikTok right now. Oh yeah, no, yeah, they're no, kids are never that jaded. They never get that jaded. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> wow, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So you violated international law there in Canada. <laughs> you were so careful about the COVID. About and then, the COVID, but then I was like, indecent exposure, yeah. You fish tank indecent exposure. <laughs> Very cool. I'm a professional woman. What and do you I know you, oh, speaking of being a professional woman, you just directed a movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just uh, directed my first feature, which I wasn't expecting to do, and it came together really fast, and it was like the most fun I've had this in years. This is a crazy story. I, oh, yeah, the, the true story? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's based based on a thing that really happened in the 1970s, this woman went on the dating game and the man that she chose was a serial killer. Yeah, and, wrong um, choice, Yeah. bad choice. Um, yeah, <laughs> like crazy, crazy true story, sort of from her perspective. And I just, I had so much fun doing it, but I <laughs> I will say that like, I, I you know, directors like, they're great, they're, they're great. Please hire me. But um, uh, they think they're really interesting because they're so like hyper focused on the thing that they're making that they I think they expect you to be as interested in that thing. But then I'm now like the last like three months of my life I've been hyper focused on this thing. So I find myself going like. Well, there was this one set that was like orange and purple, and then we decided that like we wanted to make it more rust than eggplant. And like, why is every why is everybody walking away? And why does everybody feel like they hate me like more than usual? Do you have someone in your life who pretends to think everything you say is interesting? Well, you have to. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, but once the commercials hit, forget about it. Then that's uh, it's over. <laughs> no, but no, that's so fascinating about the orange um, set. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's like nobody wants to talk That's to me. That's a great all story. All my stories are like. That's a crazy story. I look forward to seeing that. <laughs> I know a little about, about that story. They think that guy may have killed like over 100 people, right? Yeah. No, it's really terrifying. It's like definitely a great kind of metaphor for like you think you know what you're getting yourself into and like who's the person behind the curtain. And it's just like such a terrifying story. I wonder if like in like 25, 30 years, we'll find out one of the bachelors killed 100 people. <laughs> likely. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here. What's the name of the, the movie uh, that, that you directed? Oh, um, it's, it doesn't have a title right now. Oh, well, That's okay. a terrible answer. Okay. You have to seem interested. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Oh, yeah, thank You're you really very much. I appreciate it. Well, I can't wait to see Untitled. And um, <laughs> Alice Darling opens uh, at the movies in AMC theaters on January 20th. Anna Kendrick, everybody. Thank you, Anna. We'll be back with Jermaine Fowler.